Hello and welcome to this short overview on service keys. My name is Paul McGuinness. I'm a solutions architect with Megaport based in the EMEA region. So what I'm going to do is take you through um, some of the basics about what service keys are used for, what you need to uh, create service keys, and then we'll do a short demo on how to use them. So service keys are used to connect uh, two separate businesses together. Um, it's for customers who have separate um, Megaport accounts and it allows them to connect their ports to each other across the Megaport network. Some of the things that you need to have in place before you can uh, connect to each other using service keys are as follows. You need to have access to the Megaport portal and that's on both ends so both customers will need to have a Megaport portal account. They will need to have uh, ports provisioned and available on the Megaport network and that can be anywhere globally and they'll need to have uh, their customer equipment connected to those ports and supporting 802.1Q on both ends. The service keys themselves may be shared um, out of band in any appropriate method so one party can generate a key and then share that with the other party using email or any popular messaging service that they want to use. So just to give you um, a quick graphical overview of that, here we have business A on the left hand side with a port in Dublin and business B on the right hand side with a port in London. In this case, the uh, business A in Dublin has generated a key. They are then sharing that key out of band with business B. So they maybe have emailed that across to them. Um, business B will then take that key and they'll use it to create a virtual cross connect back to the port in Dublin. Um, the business A in Dublin will get a notification and it is up to them whether they want to accept the connection request or to reject that request when the notification uh, comes in. The payment for the virtual cross connect is um, uh, done by the party who uses the key to create the virtual cross connect. So in this case, payment would be um, billed to business B in London because they have taken the key and created that virtual cross connect. So um, with that, let's go across and look at the portal and do a quick demo and show you how to use the service keys. So what I've got here, I'm in the uh, at portal.megaport.com. Um, I'm just using a single account to show you this today. Um, in real life, this will be two separate portal accounts with a port on each side. But for demonstration purposes, I've got a port already here in Dublin, which is called Customer A Dublin SK, that has been created. And likewise, I've got another one here, Customer B London SK as well. So what I'm going to do is create a service key on the Dublin port, and then I'm going to use that to create a connection from Customer B back to the customer A port. So to create a service key, you just use the key icon here on the port. If I click on that icon, it brings up a table showing me um, a previous key that exists there. What I'm going to do is just add a new key. So with this key, I can give it a name. I can choose whether I want a, a single use key or a multi use key. Um, for a multi-use key, all you have to do is to put in uh, a rate for that, choose how long you want to have the multi-use key available for, and then you can decide whether you want to have it active now, or you can disable it and activate that later if you wish as well. With a multi-use key, um, the customer that you share it with can create uh, or request multiple connections using that key. If you decide to use a single-use key, then uh, they can only use that one time, they have to enter the data rate, they have to enter a uh, VLAN ID, uh, complete the date as before, and they also have the option to leave it active or to disable the port uh, while it's being created. So I'll go ahead and add that key. And now we can see it has been added to the list of available keys here. And the key is actually here on the left hand side. If I click on it, it gets copied to clipboard and then I can close this window. So now to create um, a virtual cross connect between these two ports, 
I'm going to the port in London. I'm clicking on the plus connection icon and then I've got these options to connect to various different things but what I'm interested today in is to, to enter a service key. So clicking on that I paste in the service key and I get details of the service key found giving me the name, the company and the maximum speed that this key allows. So clicking next on that I can then give it a name I can add an invoice reference if I want, and then I can enter a speed anywhere up to the maximum speed that this key allows. In this case, I'm going to make it uh, 40 megabits per second and not go all the way to the, the maximum allowed by the key of 50 megabits per second. I can then enter a, a VLAN ID here for the A end. So this is for the, the London end in this case. We can see that the B end has already been inputted based on the information that was carried across with the key, which was created um, uh, and linked to the, the Dublin port. So that's all the information we have to enter. If I click Next, I get a summary of what I've just provisioned. I can click Add Virtual Cross Connect. That gets added to my shopping cart here on the left hand side, and then I can just go through a standard order procedure with a couple of more clicks. Um, once this has been ordered the notification is then sent to the other side that you're trying to connect to and like I said before it's up to them whether they want to accept that port or if they want to reject it and ask them to to change something in the settings um, as previously potentially agreed. So just switching back um, to the slide deck that's really um, the completion of the overview and demo. Uh, my name is Paul McInnes. There's lots more uh, good information available at the knowledge base at kb.megaport.com. Thank you for viewing today.